The gentleman from Florida, Mr. Posey, is now recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman Barr. We heard uh, an exchange a while ago from a member on the other side said when he got here in 2008, he was uh, reminiscing some of the circumstances. Uh, they weren't very pretty. Uh, but, but one thing that was resolved by the party in charge at that time to make sure that we never had another bank failure or an economic crisis, uh, they established the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And among its charges <laughs> was to make sure we never had any more bank failures. Uh, and, and I'm just wondering, uh, did you have any contact with the uh, CFPB, Mr. Becker? The CFPB was one of our regulators, but given that we were predominantly a commercial bank, the interaction with the CFPB wasn't as significant as the other regulators. It was less significant than with the other regulators, did I hear that correct? Than the Federal Reserve and the state and the FDIC. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shea, same question. <clears throat> In my role as chairman, I don't recall ever meeting anyone from the CFPB. Okay. Uh, Mr. Roffler, same question. Uh, I don't believe I've met with anyone from the CFPB, but they did periodic exams and visits to First Republic. Okay. Uh, do you think the uh, CFPB, Mr. Roffler, uh, could have been more helpful in helping you avoid I think that the CFPB, along with our other regulators, we interacted with. We ensured we had a very professional and open relationship. We shared with them what the bank was up to and what the strategy was and how our results were. And uh, they did thorough examinations and we responded to any feedback. Okay. Uh, Mr. Becker, did you sell, convert, or otherwise affect any of your stock in the 12 months preceding? The tw I sold, there was no stock that was sold in 2022. I, I, a little bit left. into the mic, I can't, I can't hear you well. Yeah, there was um, no stock, I didn't sell any stock in 2022. And in 23, I sold after our earnings release, after it was reviewed by our legal team and myself, that we didn't have, I didn't have inside information we put a 10B51 in plan in place in January, and that was sold with expiring stock options from 2016. How, how much was that, the value at the time of that, probably? The gross amount was $3.6 million. Okay. Mr. Shea, same question. I sold no shares um, in uh, a uh, I sold no shares, actually, I sold no shares in 2022, uh, with the exception of reversing three shares that were accidentally bought in my account, which were then sold back. Those were three shares. Um, and indeed, I purchased shares um, throughout that period. 2023? 2023, I purchased shares on March 10th, 2023. Okay. Mr. Hoffman. Uh, <clears throat> I uh, transacted twice, once in 2022 and once in uh, early 2023. Both of those transactions were made with uh, the approval of our policy and procedure and our general counsel, and they were also made following uh, disclosure of financial information uh, to the market, one through our investor day and number two through our earnings release. And the last thing I would say is that it represented uh, a portion of my shares and the vast majority I retained. Yeah. What were the dates and amounts of those transactions? Uh, one of the dates was about November 15th or 16th, and it was just over a million dollars. And the other date was around January 19th or 20th, uh, roughly the same amount. <coughs> okay. I see my time is about to expire, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. 